In this episode of The Russell Brown Show, I want to talk about color correction of images which were photographed with a GoPro Hero 3 Black Edition camera. In this tutorial, I hope to go over some of the basics of correcting images from this camera. And in this case, I'm going to cover two different techniques. Images taken in the full daylight, as you see here, and a second situation where the image was taken at sunset with a completely different color cast. And I find that when I take photographs with the GoPro Hero 3 Black Edition, if you're not photographing in full daylight sunlight, you get different color balances across your images. And the way in which you correct them changes. There's not one solution to every image from the GoPro. There's just a variety of solutions, but with a similar technique. Let's give this a try on this first image right here. In this case, I'm going to go right into Adobe Camera Raw because that's where I start my adjustments. I'm going to select Command R on the Macintosh or Control R on the PC to open up this JPEG image into Adobe Camera Raw. Now there are two techniques I start with. It involves curves and levels. Here inside of Adobe Camera Raw, I can go over here to this menu right here, the Tone Curve, and I can make a curve adjustment which will get rid of the color cast within my images, which typically happen with a GoPro image, and neutralize grays within the image. It's a great technique. It works almost every time. Check this out. Under the Point tab, I go down to Channels here, and I want to select the unique red, green, and blue channels and adjust each one of them. I'm going to select the red channel. As you look down here to this diagram, you can see the number of tones within the image is displayed in this mountain range style. Here's the tip and technique. If you move the end point within your diagram here over to the edge of the mountain range, and this has variations from image to image, and if there is a plateau within your image, and only if there is a plateau, then you need to move this end point, which I'm clicking, over to the edge of the mountain range. And you'll want to move this end point here on the left-hand side for the darker values, as well as on the right-hand side for the lighter values. But in this case, I do not see a plateau over here on the right-hand side, so I do not need to make an adjustment. Let's go next to the green channel. Watch the image slowly change as I make these adjustments. Notice here on the right, there's just a little bit of a plateau. I'm just going to move this over just slightly, like this. Then I'm going to move on to the final channel, the blue channel. Now watch the image carefully as I move this left-hand side over. It's now going to neutralize my grays and really give me a nice looking image. Let's go over here on the blue values here for the highlights and move this over to the edge of the mountain range. Now there's some variation involved as you move this left to right. You can watch the screen and see if your grays go a little bit warm or cool as you move this point over. This looks pretty good. And I've simply done that, of course, by going to the blue, the green, and the red channel, moving the end points over to the edge of the mountain range. And we simply corrected the image instantly and quickly. It's really, really fantastic. So now, after I've done this, I can move on to my basic tab and make additional adjustments like clarity or vibrance. And in some cases, I'll even adjust my blacks down because the solid quality of the blacks is a little bit soft. And I might even open up my shadows a bit here with my shadow slider. Now, these types of variations will depend upon the particular image you're working with. But the basics are to start, in this case, with curves. Now, this is one technique that can be done here entirely inside of Adobe Camera Raw. I'd like to show you a second technique that I like to use and I think it gives a little bit better results. Okay, 
So in this case, I'm going to reset everything back to where it was again. I'm going to hold down my Option key on the Macintosh or my Alt key on the PC, and I'm going to select Reset down here in the lower right-hand corner. I want to export this image over to Adobe Photoshop. In this case, there are no adjustments here to the curves, and there are no adjustments yet to the image itself under the Basic tab. I'm simply going to open this image as a smart object, and in this case a camera raw smart object, by holding down the shift key and selecting open object. It will now open this object as you see here inside of Adobe Photoshop. You can see my smart object layer here to the right. Now, here we go. I'm going to achieve the same results, if not better, by going down here to the base of my layers tab panel to this menu right here to the create new fill or adjustment layer tab right here select this and I want to select in this case levels right here I'm going to achieve very similar if not better results by moving these endpoints as we did before here inside of levels over to the edge of the mountain range I first of course select the red channel right here and move my endpoint right over here to the edge of the mountain range, right there. I believe it's a little bit easier to see the data and the plateau and the mountain range here in levels than it is inside of Adobe Camera Raw with the curves dialog. Now, to make this even more accurate, check this out. If you hold down your Option key on the Macintosh or your Alt key on the PC, then click on this black point in this case and hold, it will display a preview of the areas that you're clipping in the red channel. If I move this to the right, you can see those areas being revealed here by the darker areas displayed within this red field. What you want to do is bring this endpoint just up to the point where you start to see some of the darker regions clipped. And in fact, this is the area that will be clipped of all red pixel values the area that appears in black. Let's now switch here from the red to the green and continue this process. The Option or Alt key is selected, then slide to the right. You can look for the mountain range, but you can also have this preview to see the tones start to change here to the left. I'm going to stop in that position. I'm also going to make some adjustments here to the right-hand side, the lighter values click and hold and move to the left in this case. I just want to reveal a few of the tones within the image. Then finally, the blue channel. The Option or Alt key is selected, slide to the right, and wait for the preview to show those first few pixels appear here on the left-hand side as well as here on the right-hand side. Excellent. This is setting the tones within the darker region of the image as well as the highlights. Once I've neutralized the image with this technique for the blue, green, and red channels, I can then go into the RGB channel and make additional adjustments. I might want to make it overall brighter by selecting the midpoint or even the highlight point here to the right. I could even make my shadows a little bit darker here by adjusting it here on the left hand side. It looks great. Let's take a look at a before and after. I'm going to turn the visibility indicator off by clicking here on the eye to see before and then click it back on to see after. See that fog that's removed from the image? It's like a piece of tracing paper over the image in this case and then with the adjustments, you really have a nice white, a nice black, and a nice neutral gray. You could then go back into the camera raw image, in this case by double clicking on the smart object, and I could go in and add, for example, a little bit of clarity to the image. I could also go in and add a little bit of vibrance to the image, as you see here, and click OK. So I like the combination of a smart object that I can work with, Adobe Camera Raw, combined with levels. Now, as you saw earlier, you could also combine all of that inside of Adobe Camera Raw 
with the curves adjustment, but there's something about the levels on the outside of the camera raw image that I really, really like. Okay, this was the first example. I want to take a look at a second example right here. In this case, it was a photograph taken at sunset, and the quality of light and the color balance I was using didn't quite match, and so the tones are a little bit off, and the image again has that fog over it. Once again, I'm selecting Command R or Control R on the PC to open this into Adobe Camera Raw. I'm going to use my second technique that I really like, simply selecting the Shift key and opening this object with no adjustments made inside of Adobe Camera Raw. Then, as we did before, let's create a Levels adjustment to this by selecting Levels here from the base of my tabbed panel, Levels. Okay, just like before, let's select right here and move down to the red channel and select it. Then selecting our darker values here to the left with this black arrow here. I'm going to move it to the right. Now I'm going to hold down my Option or my Alt key again for that preview because I want to get just to the point where a little bit of the clipping is happening here as you can see on the screen. Then let go. Now there are some times when I do not want to turn on that preview because I want to watch the way the colors change, for example, as I move the lighter values here on the right. I can see if it becomes cooler or warmer. But in most cases, I like to hold down that Option key because I like the digital technique of knowing exactly when to stop right there. And as you can see, I am moving a little bit into this plateau. There are a few pixels here, as you can see, right about here, but I'm moving in a little bit farther, and this preview with the Option key will really help me. Let's go right down here to the green channel. Moving my left slider here over until I see the preview, and of course, the right slider as well. Just right about there. And finally, my blue channel. The left-hand side with the preview, and the right-hand side. Now, since I'm finishing this all off right now, I'm going to turn off the preview and just watch the colors change as I shift a little bit more blue as I slide here and a little bit more yellow as I slide there. I want to get that really nice neutral point or even give it a slightly blue cast or a yellow cast based upon what my final goal is for the overall color balance within this image. That looks pretty good right about there. All I do now is go back over here and preview this. I'm going to turn the visibility of this layer on and off by clicking on the eyeball right here. So this is off. Wow. Look at that color cast and that almost haze that appears over the town with that tracing paper fog that I spoke of before. Let's turn this back on again much better, much clearer, much sharper, really fantastic. I'm going to zoom in on that and you can see that. It's the greatest and simplest way to improve the quality of any still image that you take with your GoPro Hero 3 camera. And in fact, this technique works for all of the GoPro cameras, this simple technique of adjusting levels or curves. And once again, if I wanted to make additional adjustments, I can go back into Adobe Camera Raw by double-clicking on this smart object and making those adjustments, or make additional non-destructive adjustments with levels or curves found here within Photoshop. There you have it, the basics of color correcting images from a GoPro Hero 3 Black Edition camera. Give this technique a try.